Cool, everybody, and thank you so much for attending today to learn more about how RETO, or the real estate standards uh, in our industry, can be used to unleash the marketing power of, for the brokerages and technology companies and everybody. So let's just jump in. I'm Marilyn Wilson. I'm the um, founding partner of RE Technology and um, one of the, the president of our, our um, founding partner of Wave Group, excuse me, the president of RE Technology. And I want to introduce our two speakers today. They've got some really good information to talk to you about. This is a really important topic for brokers. Um, the idea that we can have consistent data across our industry um, that can make it easier for brokers to do a whole bunch of things um, is really important. So today we've got Tom Flanagan, who's the Vice President of Technology for Alon Pinnell Realtors out in the Bay Area. And he also serves on the RESO Board of Directors. And then we also have uh, Jeremy Crawford, who's the CEO of the Real Estate Standards Organization and has a ton of background in working um, in technology for MLSs and brokerages. Um, so welcome, guys. Thanks so much for having us, for being with us today. Thanks, Marilyn. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So let's turn it over to Tom. He's going to take us through some, some really interesting work that we've done with brokers, understanding about how RESO really can play a part. And he, of course, has very first-hand practical knowledge as the head of a, a very uh, large brokerage in the Bay Area. So let's turn to the next slide, and Tom, take it away. Yeah, first and foremost, I just want to take a moment and recognize the real estate brokerage community participating in the RESO um, Real Estate Standards Organization. And so we actually have two offices who sit on the board. And uh, first up is Carrie Sylvester from Keller Williams, the VP of Industry Development. And then we have Alon Chaver, who is uh, the CIO at Home Services. And they're two of our offices that sit on the RESO board. And then on the next slide, of course, we have uh, myself, uh, VP of Technology at Alain Pinnell Realtors here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And then we have my friend David Gunper, who is the CTO at Michael Saunders. And by the way, Michael Saunders does the majority of their technology work in-house, uh, particularly all of their programming and engineering. And then, of course, we have Craig Cheatham of the Realty Alliance, President and CEO. And so, you know, if we take a look at the next slide, um, most major brands are represented in the RESO community, and there's some fine brands here. And just to name a few, obviously, Leading RE, Leading Real Estate Companies of the World, and Redfin, and Realogy, and Keller Williams. So we have this really um, just, you know, fine representation across most major brands across the United States. And so... So I'm a web guy, and when I think of standards, the first thing that always comes to my mind is the W3C, which oversees web standards, and how important the work that they do is, not only for web developers, engineers, but also marketers and consumers. And so I'd like to just to pass the baton for a moment and let Jeremy just chat about why standards are the sort of the key ingredient to business success. Uh, thank you, Tom, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. I really appreciate the opportunity to present out to you with Tom today on uh, standards and how they can help your business from a marketing perspective in the real estate industry. Just at a high level, people often ask me as CEO of the Real Estate Standards Organization where standards come into play in other industries, and what is really interesting is that in the U.S. alone, there's more than 100,000 standards at work in the current economy across all different types of industry and taking a look at the Department of Commerce standards directly impact over 80 percent of the global commodity trade that's a massive impact of every country in the business and the GDP that they crank out on an annual basis that is powered by standards helping their businesses no matter what industry it is there. And in one particular study, the Department of Defense is projecting almost a $790 million cost avoidance of one of their programs through implementing standards for cost savings and realizing efficiencies in converting to a standard environment at the Department of Defense. That's just one program and a massive amount of tax dollars saved by leveraging standards. But standards play a part in not only financial aspects, but also safety. As you take a look at over 40,000 home fires, 1,400 injuries, and 350 deaths 
annually have been saved through standardization of just a circuit interrupter that you might find in your house. Most people call those GFIs. So the standards that go in place in the electricity industry for that one particular item is saving over 40,000 home fires a year. Um, and that's, that's a pretty heavy impact from a quality aspect and an aspect outside of the financial realm of standards being impactful in business. And essentially, when you take a look at standards, you're really looking at the ability to offer sought after products and services, be able to increase your market value with product innovation, increase your competitiveness out in the industry uh, for helping you do real estate transactions, and increase the quality of what you do by using standards while reducing cost and duplication efforts, especially as it starts to relate into MLS data, if you will. And so as we take a look at this, I want to pass this back to Tom to talk about some interesting facts that we've discovered over the past couple of years on data challenges brokers have faced today. Tom? Yeah, so RISO recently uh, conducted a nationwide survey, and um, I'd like to share some of those um, facts that came out of the survey with the audience. And more than 100,000 real estate agents um, were um, covered in this survey. And so um, the first one, um, which is, you know, really interesting is that most brokerages have five or more systems on different platforms that don't communicate with each other. That is something that I can certainly um, relate to um, you know, here at Alon Pinnell. And those systems include things like accounting software and human resource platforms and back office tools, you know, things we use every day like CMAs and open house organ organizers and things like that. So again, to Tom, reiterate... Can, Tom, can I stop you for a second? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, we're at, the slide is stuck for some reason. You know how systems are. Robert, can you make sure we move to the next slide, please? There we go. Okay. okay. Just a perfect Maybe just... example. Marilyn, just a perfect yeah. example of why standards are important. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> okay, thank you. My pleasure. So, I mean, just to reiterate, uh, most brokerages, brokerages have five or more um, systems in-house. They're on different platforms, and they typically don't communicate with each other. Um, however, the number one um, challenge, the number one data challenge for real estate brokers is inconsistent data fields from MLSs that they work with. And, you know, here in the Bay Area, I'm working with eight MLSs, and so that certainly resonates with me. Interestingly enough, 91% um, of brokers believe that data standards are critical. And so that, you know, that just tells me, and that indicates to me that, you know, whether you're a broker owner, a CEO, uh, an operations officer, that, you know, standards are important. And people running real estate brokerages in the United States are aware of that and how critical data standards can be. And so... Um, also, 88% of brokers want representation in data standard settings, and they want that voice to be heard, and I think we all know that, right? So, you know, we have many managers and um, operations people that sit in MLS boards, and they participate um, both locally and nationally in technology communities and MLS communities and want their voice to be heard not only for the good of the industry, but for the good of their local brokerage. And so, um, you know, I thought this quote was um, sort of um, telling, and I'll just read it verbatim. The industry as a whole has a track record for not responding to change in a cohesive way. If RISO can help shape a cohesive response going forward, it's potentially huge. And that's one of the value propositions that I see RISO. So I'm glad this quote was not only included in the survey, but this slide as well. And so um, another interesting fact, 85% of brokers surveyed believe that technology partners had consistent data flowing across MLSs. And, you know, I have, to, I have to be honest, when I chat with broker owners or CEOs across the United States, the first question I always get is, 
why is RISO and data standards important? And my first answer is always it can save you money. It can reduce technology costs. And then, of course, the first question following that up is how? Explain it to me. And so the analogy that I always use is say you're working on a new project like a new website, and you may have to um, provision five different MLSs, and those five different MLSs may have completely different fields. They may have completely different rules and regulations. They may handle things like sold data completely different, and it's a lot of programming and a lot of engineering time that goes into building that platform. And so with data and it's just imagine a scenario where your programmer, your engineer, your development partner only has to create one set of data fields in the database to accommodate that new web project you're working on. And I mean, that can mean the difference of saving 40 to 80 hours of programming on a statement of work, and that equals huge savings. And so um, that's always the sort of the first value proposition I always communicate to executives, to broker owners, to operation officers who are wanting to learn more about um, standards in the RISO organization. And so uh, Pam O'Connor, the great leader and president and CEO of leading real estate companies of the world, you know, she was recently telling me, you know, quality of standards matters and that standards make everything more efficient, which can only create cost savings, increase speed and deployment of listing data. And so, um, again, I, might, I mentioned Michael Saunders real estate um, in Florida or in, in the broker introduction. And David and his team do everything in-house. And, um, you know, it's interesting, whether you're doing everything in-house or you're working with a development partner, making sure that that partner is a RISO member and participating in the RISO organization is really critical. If you're using a vendor, if you're using popular real estate companies in the technology space like CoreLogic or Bouge or Terabits or Boston Logic, lots of these great companies across the United States, make sure that that they're accountable, that they have a voice and that they're working with RISO and that they're adhering to the data dictionary, which we might get into a little bit further. And so um, I just think it's, um, you know, really important. And I'm sure Jeremy will certainly, um, you know, support that sentiment. Yes, absolutely. And I know we took a look at uh, standards in the global world. But let's talk for a minute about why RISO, what is RISO's role in the real estate space at the business level, and um, what is really the structure of RISO, and, and why are we poised to really help the real estate industry as standards have done so for many, many years, decades, in fact, across the world's global economy. Um, RISO itself, we are an independent, nonprofit, membership-based organization. Uh, we are structured very similarly to other standards organizations across all different industries. RISO was incorporated in 2011 with a goal to be a nonprofit industry community service oriented company to be open source and to be able to help all stakeholders in the industry come together. RISO standards actually started uh, inception in the late 90s, uh, but it was 2011 before our incorporation as nonprofit as an independent organization. But our standards have been around and the industry for almost 20 years now. As a membership-based organization, we have over 630 organizations that are members, and within those organizations there are thousands of individual volunteers contributing to the creation and the evolution of industry right standards for the real estate uh, community with the goal of helping everyone increase competition and decrease costs while funneling and fueling innovation products out there in the brokerage community. So with inside of the membership organization, Tom did a great job highlighting many of the brokerage brands which are represented throughout RISO and brokers do volunteer and participate on all different aspects from the board level all the way through individual work groups and committees to make sure that the challenges brokers are facing today and the challenges that they see in the future are helped by the creation and evolution of standards. Uh, inside of the membership community we also have 
a large number of multiple listing services and association of realtors that are valued Rezo members, as well as the technology partners, those that create MLS software, as well as those that create software products and services for the entire community, be it agents or brokers, and all of the needs that they have within the products that they need to use to market listings and transact business. As I mentioned, uh, Rezo standards are free and they're open source to everyone. We want to make sure that regardless of the membership aspects of Rezo, everyone in the industry can benefit from standards and therefore it is our goal to maintain an open source environment so any standard which is officially approved by the Rezo Board of Director becomes free and available to the entire globe to use that as they see fit. I did want to point out a very important aspect of standards. Sometimes across the global world, standards organizations are organically put into place based upon the benefits of those standards. While that does apply in the real estate industry, based upon the request from the brokerage community out to the NAR MLS Policy Committee and NAR's Emerging Issues Committee, there were MLS policy languages adopted by the NAR MLS policy mandates regarding Rezo standards. So based upon the brokerage request in November of 2014, NAR formally voted to accept updated policies that MLSs must adopt Rezo standards within one year of approval by the Rezo Board of Directors. So all the work that goes into creating standards across the community uh, at the request for the brokerage's needs to help their business are implemented by MLSs within a year to maintain their compliance with the NAR policy mandates. Some often ask me, what is the process if an MLS is not in compliance? NAR Policy Committee is happy to hear your voice and listen to your concerns and work with the MLSs to ensure they do come in compliance with all policy statements, including adoption of the Rezo standards. And they are very proactive in helping in those efforts and they're there to assist you for any policy issue that is there. Rezo actually provides certification services because we want to ensure that anyone that's using standards are doing them correctly. MLSs obtain RISO certification, which allows them the ability to demonstrate the compliance with NAR MLS policies out to all of the industry, and MLSs can then advertise to their brokerage community, to their agents, and the technology companies that receive data from MLSs, they have those available in a compliant manner. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I want to do some clarifications as some misconceptions I often hear in the industry as to what Rezo is and what Rezo is not. And I wanted to just make sure we have clarity. We are a technical standards-based organization, but we do not set or enforce IDX VAL or other data feeds, approvals for data feeds, policies at the local MLSs and data licensing agreements. Uh, Rezo does not work in that space. We do not set or enforce any listing syndication policies. I've personally always believed that the broker is the owner of the listing and as such Rezo is a non-biased standards open source organization and we do not directly get into any of the aspects of where a broker might want to listing syndicate their their listings or the distribution rules of individual MLSs surrounding MLS data and broker reciprocity for sharing that data between brokers. Rezo does not have any MLS data. I get asked on a weekly basis for MLS data in many of your local market areas. We do not have MLS data. Uh, we do test the data for certification purposes. Uh, but is not retained and so we do not have a nationwide repository. With that being said, we did launch in conjunction with the Austin Board of Realtors and CoreLogic a developer free access into Austin's MLS data. It's not data that Rezo hosts or maintains, but we do allow people to go to the Rezo website as a developer and apply for access to get to that feed, which is granted in 24 hours at no charge, and provides the ability from the brokerage community 
to test out your products in a development environment prior to having to obtain a, an approval process at an MLS uh, or move that into a production light. And so that is the service that we want to help promote throughout the industry. Um, we do not set or control any MLS business rules. MLS business rules do change from region to region and oftentimes is powered by state or local regulations such as non-disclosure states, but I wanted to make sure it was clear to everyone that we do not set any aspect of MLS business rules or the policies therefore. Uh, and finally, one misconception is that we are owned by NAR. As I mentioned earlier, we are a nonprofit organization that is independent. NAR does have two seats on the RISO Board of Directors out of the 19 seats that are there. So NAR is a RISO member and NAR is represented at the RISO Board of Directors and they do participate heavily in many of the RISO work products and work groups that we have. So speaking of work products, I just wanted to give you a very high level overview of what are our work products in the standards industry. And we really have two categories. We have defining the data technically across the industry as our goal overall is a nationwide data standard. It would be a wonderful world if we all lived in a place where every agent listing input form looked the same, was consistent market to market, and as the consumer listed their property, that same listing input form was in the MLS and on every IDX website and portal and product where you market your listings in a standardized manner. The Rezo Data Dictionary is just that. It is the standard for how data should look across the nation. These are technical data standards with technical definitions, so we don't get into the business rule definitions in a local market of what a coming soon status might actually mean in a local MLS, but we do define coming soon as an MLS status and what the name is, the standard name, what type of data field it is, what suggested length that might have and some of those technical details. Now that we've defined the data, the data needs to be transported from point A to point B to Z. You all, as pointed out earlier, have five or more products typically that use MLS data in your brokerage operations to help you with marketing, sales, etc. And so as such, in the late 90s, the first standard Rezo created was RETS, the real estate transaction specification that's been around for almost 20 years with the purpose of taking MLS data and essentially creating a train of distribution that could carry that data from the MLS to all the products and services you use to help your business. The latest transportation standard is the Rezo Web API and we'll go into that a little more in detail but essentially at the high level it's the latest technology version of transporting data in today's world. Uh, the RET standard being almost 20 years old, most people don't have cars or even homes that are 20 years old, let alone something that's powering technology. And so the API is the replacement for RETs to bring the standards into the real world which we live in in today's technology society. Uh, if you'll go to the next slide, I believe that Tom's going to dive into some of the broker and agent benefits for the Rezo Data Dictionary specifically to help paint a view of how this can help your business locally. Tom? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm happy to tackle this one. You know, there's some crossover and some overlap here with the broker and agent benefits because we know a lot of the products that um, brokers are providing to agents um, or provide many of these products to agents in many cases. And so I already discussed, you know, how, um, you know, the data dictionary and standards in general can reduce technology costs, but that also correlates with support time and the cost of support time. And, you know, we all know that it's much more feasible to get into maintenance mode um, than actually engineering and development time for sure. So um, some of the other interesting bullet points um, you know, regarding data dictionary is the less investment in interfacing with multiple MLS data sets. Um, for sure, um, this is one that's a huge pain for me personally, I can tell you. Um, again, we work with eight, with eight, 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 um, 
Mexico Bay Area, and they all are on different applications. They all have different data fields and data sets. Um, in many cases, completely different rules and regulations. And so that standardization and um, adhering to the data dictionary is really um, critical. Um, faster time to market with products utilizing MLS data. I mean, being flexible, um, you know, um, with data. And, you know, I work in Silicon Valley, and, you know, a lot of tech companies sort of shy away from the real estate industry because it's really difficult to come to market quickly with a product and then sort of um, incrementally in an agile environment approve upon that product because the foundation of real estate products is that MLS data. And so, um, again, uh, another benefit of the data dictionary is consistent data display across all products and regions. And I could go on for a long time about this one, but just taking simple examples, things in your, in your web, on your website or your native application, so little things like bedrooms and bathrooms and half baths and all of these consumer-facing data sets that are so important in the home buying or selling uh, experience, those little things really make a difference. And again, on the agent side, consistency across products containing MLS data, including agent IDX websites, CRM applications, mobile apps, that could be both native across iOS and Android, but again, you know, with standards, you want a seamless uh, mobile web experience as well. And then, of course, greater software selection and an opportunity for increased innovation, which is the key, right? Moving that needle forward in the real estate industry. New software and updates available in days rather than months. You know, I know managing a technology department, that would be so huge for me. Um, and just, you know, to roll out a project that, you know, and a product that you can do in days as opposed to months is, again, that can be tied back to reducing technology cost and support time, but, oh, boy, what a what an improvement that would be going from uh, months to days. And then, of course, a more uh, unified experience between the agent and the consumer, right, and so it's sort of that high-tech, high-touch um, experience and, you know, um, in many cases, uh, running a real estate brokerage, your client is the real estate agent and their client is the consumer. And so there's a holistic relationship there that standards could um, really improve. And then if we go to the next slide and, you know, I'll turn this one um, over to Jeremy, but the data dictionary, I'll just leave it off by saying, you know, there are almost 1,100 fields and 1,500 values per provision. And so, Jeremy, I'll let you chat about a little bit more about this one. Yeah, and the misconception we often hear is that the, the RISO standards do not have enough uh, standardized data fields, and we wanted to just present to you where the data dictionary is today and what it has contained within the data dictionary on the current version. We do a release every year. We grow what's in the data dictionary based upon input from your local market area specifically. We have many brokers bring to us new fields and new pick list values their agents might select within a field for features uh, and the property as an example. And we look to standardize those across the nation and annually release an updated version. But if you take a look at what's there today, these are very key to your ability to market your business. So if I point out open houses, your contacts, your prospects that you are helping find or sell their listings, uh, their saved searches and their carts where they're saving uh, particular listings that they like on a portal website or your own brokerage website. And one very common topic of interest is green fields, uh, smart homes and energy efficient homes. These are all categories of fields and values that are supported in the Rezo Data Dictionary. And as we look into the future, we're looking to add in transactional aspects of when you're using transaction rooms to do uh, transact your listings and combine in aspects of showing information and lockbox information and additional functionality for managing your clients and your prospects. We are working extensively to grow those as strategic initiatives to be able to help your business. And if we take a look at all of these fields and the values, where are we in the usage in the industry? And if we go to the next slide, you will take a look at the fact that from an MLS perspective, 
93% of the MLSs across the nation have implemented the Rezo Data Dictionary, and you now have the ability to have Rezo standardized data through those MLSs. There are over 600 MLSs in the nation that have implemented Rezo standards, covering over 1.3 million brokers and agents that are participants and surprise uh, and um, subscribers into those MLSs and we continue to have MLSs add themselves daily and obtain certification on the correct implementation of the Rezo Data Dictionary. As I mentioned earlier, if we go to the next slide, just briefly we talked about the transportation and why did Rezo take a look at moving into APIs. And essentially, APIs in a very high level view is the ability to access data in a real time manner where you actually don't have to replicate the data all across all of those five or more products that you have, but you can access it on the fly in a real time manner. And APIs really make it possible to piggyback services and offerings within the products that you have. And if you take a look at a couple of examples, uh, many people in the world play words with friends. That is integrated with allowing you to invite your Facebook contacts to play Words with Friends with you. That's all done through real-time APIs. When you use Yelp to look at restaurants on a Google map within its own app, you're integrating Google's APIs to display map locations of Yelp address-based restaurants. In the MLS systems, you yourself, your, your broker managers, your agents that use every day, the MLS systems use a plethora of APIs to display homes on your Google and Bing Maps, integrate items such as your walk scores, integrate tax data with the listing data and those property records. Those are all powered by APIs that have been out in the world for a long, long time. And if we take a look at the, the next slide, we essentially took the need of the industry to have a standardized API for data delivery and Rezo created two years ago the Rezo Web API standard. And as sim simplistically, RETS was a great standard for 20 years, but was proprietary and very difficult for many to come to market quickly with products and services. The new Rezo Web API is leveraging global technology standards, which are created by companies such as Microsoft, Google, SAP, Oracle, Yahoo, etc. And so essentially, OData and OpenID Connect provide the ability to simplify sharing data and provide single sign-on across all of the products you use today. So an agent can log into their MLS system or maybe even their Gmail account and hop directly into all of the products that you offer them to help them transact business without asking them to log in today. Those are supported within the Rezo API standard. It's a very lightweight standard that would allow mobile environments to access snippets of data on the fly from an MLS or another product and can support the mobile community that we live in today as agents often live by their smartphones for the primary tool they use to do their business and integrate with all of the tools that you have. And the API is providing a less expensive implementation model as it's providing off-the-shelf tools that are available for free, and you can grab those to access MLS data as opposed to paying for proprietary software development, and it provides efficiencies, and it supports enhanced data delivery and such as listing tracking information that would power your broker marketing needs, and I'll go into listing tracking details here in just a couple of short slides. But I believe Tom first wanted to just take a short, very small list of the many products that brokerages have where standards come into play in the Rezo community on the next slide. Tom? Thanks, Jeremy. That was some great information. I wanted to put together uh, a list of some bullet points um, where Rezo standards can really help brokerages um, with products and services. And these are all items that, you know, um, we who work in brokerages discuss all day every day. And so, you know, the list includes websites, IDX websites, CRM platforms and applications, um, listing exposure and lead reports for clients, showing feedback 
um, showing solutions and other call to actions, um, mobile applications um, for multiple platforms. That includes iOS and Android and uh, tablet applications and back office solutions. I know we spend a lot of time in back office solutions connecting things like API, third party applications and native applications, um, particularly whether it's a hub and spoke back office solution or a fully integrated solution, marketing automation programs, virtual tours or videos, promoting green features, save searches across all devices, um, things like property alerts and save searches that consumers use every day in the real estate search experience and safety programs. And this is just a small handful of items that I work on every day and that I know people who um, run brokerages, their teams work on every day as well. But one of, you notice, one of the things you'll notice in this theme is that it's just not the technology department or the IT department um, that these items fall into that bucket. And there's a lot of crossover um, into marketing as well because, right, the marketing and technology department work on a lot of these items together, particularly websites and mobile apps, virtual tours, videos, um, obviously tools that websites and apps have and showcase like save searches and property alerts and there's a lot of crossover and a lot of gray area between marketing and technology and I think you know I think when I chat with a lot of you know whether it be real estate tech folks or broker owners across the United States you know they may have this perception that RESO falls into you know the technology department and their responsibility but in my every day day-to-day -day practices working in at Alain Pinel in the brokerage these are items that you know not only impact technology but marketing and training as well and so I always want to emphasize that these you know the data dictionary and resource standards um, um, you know, really impact multiple departments in a real estate brokerage. And if we take a look at the next slide, Jeremy, and I know you mentioned um, internet tracking. I think this is a perfect example of that crossover between MarTech, right? That marketing and technology departments working on similar things. And internet tracking is a perfect example of this. So I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. And so as we look at what are we doing from the brokerage requesting community from a standards perspective is it came to light a couple of years ago that there are individual reports that give you performance statistics about your listing exposures on all of your products. The problem with that is there are individual reports on individual products. An initiative was formed based upon that broker business need to provide a standardized manner to report back to your, your entities, your broker office managers, your agents, and even their clients about the listing exposures and leads and interest they're getting out in the community in a consolidated and standardized manner. And so what Rezo did was form a specific working group to focus on these efforts with experts in the industry providing input as to how this would work and they came up with a standardized model and if you take a look at the next slide essentially the standardized model which is supported by the World Wide Web Consortium which Tom opened with is taking a look at your the actors in the industry so your consumers that are your clients uh, the brokers and the agents and the events that all of those actors take on every day taking a look at a detailed listing view on a uh, broker IDX website. An agent might print that out for their client as a particular lead or print out 20 flyers to put in the box in front of the home. And then a consumer might take a view at a property video. They may favor a property or they may discard a property out of their safe search on a particular website. And as we all know, we use multiple websites in our real estate shopping experience, and it would be great to have that information in a consolidated manner. Whenever someone clicks on the phone number to call you or sends in a lead submission form, when a consumer that's one of your prospects for buying or selling, they actually share the listing out to their friends and their family through Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. They send that through messaging through all of the different messaging applications that are out there. Essentially, Rezo has taken a look at all of these activities 
and built out a standard that supports inside of the data dictionary and the API to consolidate all this activity from your end consumer, put it into a funnel, and to deliver you the ability to buy or develop in-house a reporting dashboard that can capture every bit of the essence of the marketing of your property across all those mediums, put it at your fingertips, so you can then know where do you need to spend money on advertising more or less, and how is that money performing for you, and that is all powered through data delivery and standardization through Rezo standards. And so that's just one example of that, and we're often asked the question, you told us about these standards, but how did they actually get created? What is the process for that? And so if we take a look at the next slide, I have a very simplistic view that Rezo has a research and development work group. That is the realm where brokers bring in their challenges and their business needs to the standards community. The standards community then takes a look and vets out the challenges and gets as much information from the brokerage community um, from across the nation and everyone works together within standards work groups to come up with a common solution that will be free and open source to the public. Once that is agreed upon by those standards work groups, it is reviewed by the chairs of every work group within the Rezo community and a board of director liaison, which is our technical committee review. Then it is ratified by the Rezo board of directors, and if it is a data dictionary standard, at that time MLSs have a year to implement it from NAR's MLS policy statement. So this is a very simplistic view how those thousands of volunteers across over 600 organizations work together and leave their competitive hats at the door and try to solve the challenges that brokers face in transaction listings to hopefully come up with a standard that can provide a solution to be implemented in broker products and services to resolve that challenge as effectively as possible. Um, and if you take a look at Rezo's work groups and communities on the next slide, we have specialized work groups and committees to really drive focus on the funnel of input at the research and development work group into any other work group across the Rezo community, data dictionary, the web API, internet tracking, payloads, which is working to standardize IDX-based data feeds so you can have the same set of 250 fields from MLS to MLS that's delivered to you for an IDX-based feed for broker reciprocity and internet data exchange. Uh, property Unique ID, RETS, as we mentioned earlier, and then our committees as well as the board of directors that we have. And so any member is allowed to participate in any committee work group that Rezo has. And so membership provides you the opportunity to give your input into any work group, bring any challenge that you have that might have a solution in the standards community and bring that in. And membership provides you the access and only member organizations can participate in standards development as that allows us to provide intellectual property protection to the contributors so we can make it truly open source without the risk that comes associated with intellectual property in the normal society that we have. And so if we take a look at how to leverage Rezo standards in your marketing aspect, Tom's going to highlight um, some some action items for you to where you can further leverage what Rezo standards are doing to help your business grow. Tom? Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, number one, ensure that your MLSs have adopted Rezo standards correctly and are Rezo certified. I know that many sales managers and operations officers and even CEOs in organizations sit on local MLS boards, and so your influence in that organization is um, incredibly valuable. Number two, ensure that your internal staff and or your technology companies to use resource standards and standardized data in your local MLSs. And so whether you're um, David Gumper working at Michael Saunders doing things in-house, make sure that um, 
you're utilizing Rezo standards, and if you're using a vendor, and there's so many popular vendors in the real estate industry, from Playster to CoreLogic to Boston Logic to Boo, so on and so forth, make sure your vendor in the real estate space um, is uh, Rezo certified. They're using the Rezo standards in the data dictionary. Number three, ensure that your brokerage and technology companies are members of RISO and attend RISO conferences to obtain and obtain RISO certifications where and when applicable. And that one's really key, being members of RISO and actively participating in the success of the organization is really key. And number four, have your staff or technology companies represent your business needs and ideas in RISO work groups, participation, especially in R&D. And it's really, you know, Jeremy sort of touched upon this. The work groups really do fantastic work, and that's sort of where the magic happens, as I like to say. And then finally, complain <laughs> to your MLS, um, the National Association of Realtors in RISO, if your MLS is not certified. And so if we look at the next slide, I just want to uh, quickly discuss the RISO conferences. And I will say this, if you don't have room on your calendar, I know that there are a lot of real estate conferences um, throughout the year um, in every city. Um, there's some big ones and there's some really popular ones. And so if your calendar, if you're a broker owner, if you're a president and CEO or an operations officer and your schedule doesn't permit, please send your um, technology um, lead to the conference or the technology influencer in your organization, and that could even be in the marketing department, send them to the conference. I personally, this is one of my favorite conferences of the year. I may be a little biased, but um, I particularly love that the content isn't dumbed down, and it's not a lot of platitude, and I'm not a lot of fluff, and I love that. You know, even a couple of years ago, we had a plug fest, which was this sort of interactive hackathon, which was really just um, a fantastic um, session and a fantastic learning experience. And so I just love the content at Riso. I won't bore you with all of these uh, bullet points that are on the screen, but um, if you haven't seen one of the conferences, I highly recommend that you check it out. The next one that's coming up in 2017 is April 24th through April 26th in Austin, Texas. And uh, Austin, one of the great cities in the United States, um, you know, so much to do in Austin. And so such a great city. And I highly recommend that you attend the event. And um, if you want to check out the next slide. Yeah. And I will highlight all of the past presentations to Rezo conferences. Um, for the most part, are available on Rezo.org. So if you want more information as to what that looks like, go check those out and, and take a look at the sessions and the presentations of the past that might help you get a better handle on some of the content that's out there. Tom? Thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. And then I just want to finally say that um, you know if you need if you have any questions or concern, you can always contact Jeremy. Uh, his email is right there up on the screen. It's just Jeremy at Riso.org. He probably well he has his phone number phone number up there, so I'll actually recite it. It is eight five eight. 775-2368, and I have to say, J Jeremy is one of the most, um, you know, responsive executives in the real estate industry that I've ever worked with. Um, anytime I ping him via email or social media, he's on top of it, so I know that he'll communicate back to you in a timely fashion. And again, I just want to reiterate, join RISO as a member, join the RISO work groups and participate. There's nothing like um, participating in actually um, these uh, spaces. Attend RISO conferences. Again, I may be biased, but they're one of my favorite conferences throughout the year. Ensure that your tech partners are certified. That is really critical, even if you don't, um, you know, even if data standards really are not, don't resonate with you. I think it's that accountability to make sure that your partners and vendors are certified. And again, encourage MLSs, brokerages, and technology partners to be involved and integrate uh, with RISO standards. Okay, let me uh, um, jump back in. This is Marilyn. I just wanted to see now if anybody has any questions, feel free on the right-hand side of your screen in the control panel, you'll see a section called questions. Feel free to jump in and um, ask these smart folks about some of these things. I, I do have a couple that have come through, so I thought I'd start with those. And then, uh, again, feel free to ask some more because this is an um, exciting but sometimes confusing topic. 
So first question is um, probably probably for you, Jeremy. Um, so I this this person said I worked with um, three three different MLSs, and historically I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but historically they've had um, they have different sets of data. Like their their data that I get is not always exactly the same. So if I now want to use RESO data, have they all switched to using that as the primary you know, data set, or is there a separate set of data that I need to ask them for? Uh, yes, and, and that is a great question. And what MLSs have done to adopt RESO standards is they did not want to pull the access you have to data today and all the technology you built surrounding that. So for the majority of the MLSs in the nation, they didn't turn off your current data feeds, but they now offer an alternative feed, which is the standardized data dictionary-based feed. And so what you would want to do in that instance is contact your local MLSs, the three that you have there, and ask them to provide you access to the standardized data feed. And that would allow you the ability to convert over to standardized data um, while you still continue to receive data in the legacy format from those three MLSs. Make sure you take a look at the rezo.org slash certificates website to see if they're on there as certified with the Rezo Data Dictionary. And the same applies to the Rezo Web API. MLSs did not discard the RET servers that they have in place from the past 10 years, not to break your data feeds, but they now alternatively offer the API, and it would require just a simple asking of them. There are a few MLSs in the nation. Uh, I will highlight the California regional MLS that going forward, they will only provide access to data via Rezo standards and not any proprietary manner. And organically, as MLSs have converted their brokerages and technology companies over to standardized feeds, we will see more of those start to eliminate what we would call legacy types of data feeds in the disparate formats you receive today. So check Rezo.org for the certificates and contact the local MLSs. If there is any hiccup whatsoever, please send me an email or call me. We do not certify an MLS unless they can provide you a production standardized fee. That is a requirement of certification. It has to be available to the brokerage community before they can obtain certification. So I hope that helps and answers your question. If there's a follow-up, again, feel free to email me, jeremy at rezo.org. Thank you, Marilyn, for that question. OK, here, here's another one. Um, so I work with, um, again, I'm speaking like the, the broker that's asking this question, but I work with um, you know, two or three different technology companies. And how do I um, how do I know if they're compliant with RESO standards, or what what would I ask them about you know, to make sure that they they actually are compliant or are trying to get compliant? Uh, like, do I send them somewhere? Or how do I how do I find out? And, and that's a great question, and I really appreciate the question uh, because we want everyone to realize the the efficiencies and the cost savings with standards. And sometimes there's a little work in in having your technology companies convert over to standards first before those uh, efficiencies can be gained. Essentially, I would recommend that you you reach out individually to each of those three organizations and, and ask them if they're utilizing RESO standards and leveraging RESO standards. Uh, you're also welcome to take a look at um, RESO's website. We do provide certification for technology companies that push and pull data. Uh, so we do have technology companies that are certified on RESO standards in addition to MLSs. And you can also take a look at the membership roster, which is on Rezo.org as well. We list all of those 600 plus organizations that are members. And typically, if they're listed there, it's a pretty good sign they're participating with standards. If you have any questions once you ask them, or they need any assistance in getting involved in Rezo, please share my contact information or send me an email. And there are many companies I know off the top of my head that are using Rezo standards or converting over their infrastructures to the latest Rezo standards. And I'm happy to tell you where 
the statuses on those individual um, companies as well and help you with researching that. That's a great question. We really want to help you all leverage standards and help your uh, technology companies that you work with for products and services to make sure they understand standards and can adopt them to help your business for the benefits that we've shared today. Thank you, Marilyn. Here's one that um, actually that I'd like to throw in from the brokers that we work with. We get uh, lots of ideas. People are talking about, I wish my website would do this, or my, I would love this feature in my mobile app, or, and sometimes um, they're not clear if the data that they need for their new idea is within the RESO standard. Is there a way for them to check so they know if they're looking at an idea, if it's already available, or, or if it might be coming through the R&D group? Uh, absolutely. So um, we do have a data dictionary wiki, and this wiki is very similar to those of you that are familiar with Wikipedia. It is the English version, and, and the very small screenshot snippet I showed earlier is the actual data dictionary wiki. The, the site for that is ddwiki.rezo.org. It has a search feature, so if you want to take a look at um, green fields or the internet tracking fields, for example, as to what's in the production standard, you can use the search box and see if it's there. Uh, if you're a Rezo member, then we do have a development space for the data dictionary standard as well. And within the membership community, you have access to what's in the queue for the next version of the data dictionary. So if you're members today and you do not see it in the public, then you can log into the private side of what's actively being developed and see if it's there. And if it's not there, then we would love to get those ideas submitted into the queue, get them into the R&D work group, and let's figure out together as a community how can we help you with that next innovative idea or solution you would like to have to help market and grow the business by transacting more listings. That's a good segue to the next question, actually, Jeremy. So if I have an idea and I want to submit something to the R&D committee, how does that work? Do I have to be a member or do I have to come to the conference or how, how does it work if I want to submit an idea for people to think about? Uh, that's, that, that's a great question. Membership allows you full access and inside of the R&D work group there are online discussion forums of individuals just like yourself that talk about ideas back and forth on a regular basis and those are bubbled up to the R&D work group and put on the agenda to talk about formally. And we do have a business case submission document that you could use as well if you have more details. Or you can talk about it within the work group meetings that occur monthly through GoToMeeting. Um, and at the conferences as well, um, while members are typically required for input into standards, we allow non-members to provide ideas into standards at the conferences on site. So when you register at a conference, you're agreeing to contribute to standards so it can be open source. And so you can do that either as a member or at the Rezo conferences. And I will note that the, bro the broker's membership fees can be as low as $50 for the entire brokerage uh, if your brokerage is under, I believe, um, 25 or 50 agents. And the Rezo Board of Directors, which Tom was instrumental in helping, lower the membership fees for the brokerage community as we really want the focus not to be revenue as we are a nonprofit. The focus is solving your business needs and your challenges through standards development. And so those are the lowest costs that are out there that have been lowered to help you all have a forum to come into Rezo and submit those ideas and also allow any of your uh, organizational employees to present ideas and participate in any aspect of standards development through membership. Thank you, Marilyn. No, I'm just, I'll throw this in as the non-technical person on the call. Um, one thing to remember about that is that you don't have to be a technical genius to submit an idea. It's really more about the marketing idea or the, the better way to do document management or the better way to connect your accounting system to something else. It's really about use cases like the, re the rest of us, like how we use technology is really where a lot of the R&D ideas come from. So don't feel intimidated that you can't make a suggestion if you don't, if you don't talk API or you, know, you don't talk all the technical talk that a lot of the really smart people involved with this do. Um, here's another question. Do, um, if a broker wants to use RESO standardized data, do they have to become certified or is it just their technology provider that does? 
Um, so the standards that are open source to everyone doesn't require certification uh, to utilize them. Uh, it, it allows Rezo to help organizations make sure that they're adopting the standards correctly, but certification isn't required to utilize those standards. What would be key is if you're using MLS data in your products, the first question would be, does that MLS conform to Rezo standards and the data feed that you receive, is that the Rezo standardized data feed? And making sure that the MLS provides you data through the standards is the number one step of importance. And then as you're working to use that data in a standardized manner in your products and with your technology companies as your partners, then they can leverage those standards and Rezo is here to help. So if there are questions on how to use the standards, we were happy to help with that, even outside of the aspect of certification. Uh, but certification does allow technology organizations and brokerage communities learn how to use standards by the certification process itself. So we're essentially teaching you along the way to make sure you get it right through certification. Uh, we're not a pass-fail. We are a work with you until we have a common standardized solution in the products and services that you need. And we see certification as actually a service program and a benefit to helping you as opposed to being um, you know, a simple test of pass-fail like you would have when you go take your driver's license test. Gotcha. Thank okay, you. two more quick questions. We're at the top of the hour. The first one I can answer, the question is, is there, will there be a recording available of this, what we just talked about? And yes, there will be. For everybody that registered today and those that have attended, we will be sending you a copy of the recording along with some other information about RESO. So um, if you wanted to share it with anybody else within your organization, that will be available. And the final one was, um, it looked like on the, third, on the, um, the data dictionary that a lot of it was related just to residential real estate. Is there plans in place for this to expand into property management or title or mortgage or some of the other areas where brokers also operate businesses? Uh, that is a wonderful question and absolutely. Rezo has spent the past few years on the data dictionary trying to standardize the aspects of the MLS data set as recognizing that's been the number one pain point brokers dealing with disparate data across MLSs. We now see from a visionary stance that that's in a really good shape. The MLSs are much more standardized today. Brokers can start to adopt those standardized data feeds and then we get to move on into what I call the fun part of life, which is moving into the innovative areas. And so we have efforts from the transaction management side. I actually personally sit on the um, DocuSign Advisory Council and the DocuSign Advisory Board for the XDTM standards in Glen Shim, because from DocuSign is on our Rezo Board of Directors, as well as Instanet is a valued Rezo member they would like to standardize transaction rooms and how data flows between lenders, mortgage entities, brokerage communities, and MLSs as a listing is going through the transaction cycle. Those are actively in place today. Rezo works with MISMO, which is the standards body within the mortgage industry to make sure that we're aligned uh, with the mortgage and lending standards, and so we leverage each other's uh, pathways, if you will, for the flow of data. Uh, speaking of property management, uh, it has been a Rezo goal to administer what is the MIPS standard. So the National Multifamily Housing Council has a property management standard that's in place today. They're actively working to put that within Rezo's umbrella of standardization. Um, and as I mentioned too earlier that we're looking at standardizing lockbox data, showing data. We're working in a really good place with the internet tracking data and the standardization that has been formed that will be included in the next version of the data dictionary set to go out within the next three months. And we're also looking at any other of those categories. And this is a great suggestion as well that you might want to send in. If we're missing any categories where we can help with standardization, we would love to be able to do that we're also working with the um, building and land data specification. That is property permits that people pull to do renovations on their homes. And that's another standard that is in its infancy, 
that RISO is going to help include. And then the final category would be commercial. Residential was mentioned. Catalyst is one of the common commercial applications out there that CIEs and CMLSs, the commercial entities, utilize on a daily basis. Catalyst is actually a RISO member. They're participating within Data Dictionary. They have standardized the commercial fields already and been able to certify against the current Data Dictionary. And now they're helping the Data Dictionary work group over the next year put in better commercial standards in the commercial realm of real estate inside of the RISO Data Dictionary. And this is a great area where we're forward thinking and we're wanting to do some more standardization outside of the basic residential property specifics that you've seen us work on in the past. So it's a wonderful question. And any other categories you'd like to either nominate or see if we're working on, please feel free to send me an email and I'll be happy to give you status or put that into the queue of R&D to get some experts to take a look at that. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay, well thank you so much to everyone for attending today. Thanks to Jeremy and Tom for giving us such great information. Again, if you have any 